Chita Fahadans here for a two-in-one type of review. Earlier this year, Evan Burns contacted me because he had some lenses he wasn't using. So he shipped me two molars uh, while he didn't need them. And I used them to shoot this video. One of them was a Bolex molar, 16-32-1.5, and the other one was just molar, 32-1.5, which allowed me to compare both lenses and see where they differ and what they're similar. Uh, so the upcoming shots are using the Bolex molar, but for the technical aspects, I shot with both lenses so you can see the difference. Whoa, this lens is sharp. As soon as I mounted it and went out to test, I knew they were worth their high price. I used the Rectilex Hardcore DNA to make the system single focus, and due to the smaller size of the Bolex, especially when compared to two times projection lenses, I almost couldn't lock it to the Hardcore DNA using the original screws. And I benefited from the reduced vignetting when compared also to bigger scopes. Um, I was able to easily run and gun and nail some pretty intense shots due to the focus being so clear. By the way, do you also know anyone that bikes in the snow? Bokeh looks amazing and oval, which was a surprise due to the lesser 1.5 stretch factor, and the flares are gorgeous. Ah! Can I keep one of these, please? In years playing with anamorphics, I had never actually seen one of these lenses. So suddenly I have these two, and they're bigger than I expected, but not bulky. You know, there's, they're the type of lenses that are just the perfect size and weight for what they do. And that being said, they weigh 370 grams each, which is roughly a pound. Focus throw is long, just like the Iskurama, almost full circle. And that's where the weird stuff starts because it extends to focus on infinity and it's shorter to focus close. While most lenses I've tried so far are the opposite. I've heard stories of people that have different experiences, like what I just described. They're shorter at infinity, longer at close focus. But both of mine did the same thing. So if you happen to have the one that does the opposite, please let me know in the comments if your lens is different. I don't know how what I'm saying anymore. The back is a non-standard thread. It's tiny. It's about 30 something millimeters, which makes you need a clamp. And Red Stand makes some great clamps for this lens. Or if you want to save some money, you can get them from Rapido, which are also amazing. Uh, the front threads are 62 mil, which saves you money because you don't need to buy a clamp to attach filters and polarizers and whatnot. Yay, excellent stuff. If you're already in love and desperate to have one of these, I have bad news for you. The last I saw these went for around $2,000 to $2,500, and that's not too far from an Iskurama, especially when you add in the cost of a single focus solution. On top of that, they only show up eventually, and their prices keep getting higher. So maybe grab yours while you can, I don't know. Image quality on the Bolex is insane. This adapter goes hand in hand with any taking lens you pick, never hindering its resolving power no matter the aperture. Corners are also quite good as long as you don't push it into vignetting. 
When we compare the Bolex to the Molar, it's easy to see the Bolex has better coatings and contrast, but IQ doesn't change much between them. The flares are purple blue on the Bolex, which is quite sci-fi and modern, but not too much. This is like the opposite of the Escroma in terms of color tone, but the same when it comes to mood. Does that even make sense? Due to different coatings, the Molar has neutral flares, which take on the color of your light source. Not a common trait these days, and it's directly related to the lesser contrast we saw in the previous test. When it comes to vignetting, the two are the same, clearing dark corners just over 50 mil on full frame. The Rectilux Hardcore DNA makes vignetting a bit more intense, requiring slightly longer lenses to clear the entire shot. It's not too bad, and you'll be fine if you're going for a 2.4 to 1 crop instead of the whole 2.66 to 1. These are two of the best adapters I've ever played with, with the Bolex taking a slighter edge over the molar. And I kind of understand the people that have these adapters and are obsessed with them and are like, I'm never gonna sell them, I'm never gonna part with them. I understand you, buddy. I wouldn't either. And I think I would have a hard time, or wouldn't I, choosing between a Koa B&H and a Bolex molar. I think I'd swing for the molar. Do you think any stretch is inferior when compared to two times? I would love to hear your input. Did this video help you choose your gear? Did this video set you back $2,000 because you just went on eBay and bought the first Bolex that you found? Are we gonna see an even higher price rate on these lenses now? I really hope not. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and please subscribe to the channel because I have an upcoming Bolex versus Iskurama comparison which is one of the most awaited comparisons in the anamorphic world. Uh, anyway, just like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you'll see me next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Chito Hedens.